5, 10, 15, 20. Something is going on here today. Welcome back to the Brightworks, everyone. Today we are taking a look at, you guessed it, a 5v5v5v5. 20 players in total, exceeding the normal limit of 16 somehow or another. I'm not sure how these players managed it, but today we're going to be taking a look at the knockout version 1.5. Somehow these players started with five players on each team and they're each going to be playing in a corner of the map. These end up always being a really, really fun treat to watch because uh, you kind of have to pick your battles, pick your enemies, pick your nemesis and fight to the absolute bloody death over it. <laughs> now, uh, interesting things about Knockout, of course, covering the map layout in case you're not familiar. I don't cover this map all too often. Occasionally I will. And today is one such occasion. This ramp right here is the only ramp in the entire map. This one right here is the only one that vehicles can transcend or descend off of. And uh, what that means is if you're playing on the regular, quote unquote, regular starting positions here, what it's going to mean is that essentially you have your, uh, you have one option if you want to aggress the low ground and it's this southern side. So a little bit of an imbalance there, but I suppose it's uh, just part of playing on a typically what is usually a free for all map. Anyways. Over here, you can see that there are also some ramps that are accessible to bot lab units. So uh, maces, thugs, pawns, grunts, all those lovely, lovely stampeders. They're able to walk on down these ramps and over in this direction up north. So that'll be fun to see. Now, every team except for this one over here, uh, I guess going to be headed up by TZN Grumpy have started with a player on the low ground here. So you can see our blue team leader, the Big Dolphy himself, spawning on the north uh, eastern side here. East and west, very difficult for me, as I'm sure you're all aware by now. <laughs> have to do my right hand, left hand trick every time I do it. Uh, and uh, on the southeastern side, it's going to be AI easy, or maybe it's Al easy. Either way, kind of, kind of, Al easy sounds like some sort of like mafia mobster. Hey, it's Al easy. Come on down to Al Easy's pub and joint, you know what I mean? Anyways, but it's probably AI Easy. Going to be uh, spawning in the southeastern corner. Southwestern corner is going to belong to Orvar Vorvar, and uh, he's going to be going into those vehicles, those Cortex vehicles, so that should be interesting. Going for a mine layer right off the bat, interesting. wonder what the plan is there. Going to go for a spy cam in both corners, all right. Interesting to see if we are going to see maybe some walls come up, maybe some minefields come up. I'm excited to see it. And then, uh, yeah, we are going to be, I guess, competing for this area over here. It looks like Nexode is thinking about grabbing this metal extractor up on the northern side, whereas Vorbij al Redan is moving into the lower section over here. By the way, uh, you know, forgive my accents. I just choose the best one in the moment, even if it's uh, horrendously wrong, which it most likely is. <laughs> This is, uh, this is going to be a weird one because we're going to see fighting here where usually we see the fighting here. Whoops, here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, these, these teams are going to be going after each other in this little choke point, and that is very narrow. I think Janus is absolutely the right way to go here. Um, no reason that a Janus, two or three of those, could completely hold down this choke point here. You just space them out a little bit so they don't fire on the same unit at the same time. And, yeah, I mean, I think you're going to be in a really good spot. Scoutcraft have moved, moved across as well and are starting to look over here. I'm going to have a really hard time with the colors. It looks like they kind of got all mixed up. I can't, <laughs> can't really re refer to each one of these as a certain color of team, so we're just going to have to try and do our best, aren't we? Aren't I? I guess that's my job, huh? Dolphy, of course, going to be uh, elected as the blue... Well, the, I, you know, I was going to say the blue team leader, but... He's also, the, the next player down is the red player, so <laughs> don't really know how to call this here. But uh, either way, Dolphy is going to be an eco player for his team and is going to be in charge of making sure that, uh, yeah, all the all the T2 transitions happen according to a strict time frame. Uh, this bot is absolutely vibing right now. He's got some music playing in his head. 100%. <laughs> there it goes. Finally decides to get itself in shape and uh, is going to go and actually try and contribute towards the war effort. That sounds pretty nice. Lord Vendor is deciding to try and help I easy, AI easy, Al easy. Uh, going to move down south here and try and use the commander to build a little bit of defense. Looks like there was a bit of a rover scout that did get shut down, but that is still quite nice. Looks like everyone is pretty excited to get up into a higher tech level. Yeah. Hmm. Virtual P moving his commander in. Okay. Interesting. 
That's a uh, nice little set of D guns right there by Virtual P. He was the player over here. So interestingly, Virtual P, as well as his uh, opponent across the way here, which I believe is Lord Vader, Lord Vidor. Uh, yeah, they, they both went air labs to start, so that's quite funny. Now Virtual P is going to be in charge of capturing the middle of the map here. Janus Fire is withering, and you have to make sure that you avoid it at all costs. It can really scratch up your commander quite badly. Fireball, meanwhile, holding the front line with a whole bunch of rocket bots, going to try and uh, keep those Armada Rocketeers firing at long range. Difficult, but uh, rewarding, right? You, you, keep them, you keep them firing, and eventually their rockets are going to connect with something. Your uh, opponent stands still for just a second too long, and you've got a wonderful connection all the way through their base. Dolphy eating up his commander and going straight into a T2 lab. That's very on par here. We are five minutes and 44 seconds into the game. Had to time the ending of that sentence there. <laughs> four, four minutes or five minutes and 44 seconds into the game, and we see the T2 lab. Uh, well, maybe I called it a little early. Right about the six-minute mark, I think we're going to see this T2 lab come up to speed here. Clicks into action, and that is going to be a T2 constructor right out the gate here. Very stock standard. Basically all is as well as it should be. Wouldn't mind seeing this constructor go around building some more uh, energy converters. We do have six of them online here, but the wind power is quite tremendous on this map. A wind risk of 3.8 means that 3.8% of the time, the wind speed will be below the average, or will be below six rather. Uh, and uh, I mean, on a, on a map with five as the minimum, that's going to be effectively no time at all. <laughs> uh, now, as far as who has a positional advantage, it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to gauge here. I'm tempted to say that the lower left-hand team here, the left the left corner team, has a slight advantage just because they've managed to push out here. However, Ryko did manage to kill the commander of Virtual P, who just got a little too greedy on the front line, and I think those Janices just connected one too many times. These have a kill on them? No, they probably, the Janices that killed it probably went down, but uh, yeah, managing to claim all these metal extractors and the commander wreckage, that is definitely going to be well worth Ryko's time. Certainly going to net them a decent economic lead. We can actually see the economies up here in the top right-hand corner. Difficult to track all the time, but you can see, roughly speaking, uh, for Ryko, I believe that's uh, this one. Yes, 101 metal per second. Currently behind uh, Grumpy's team, although that's just because of some reclaim. It's a, uh, it's a tricky battle to gauge. Now, Fireball is being forced back here. More of those missile trucks firing from long range. Missile trucks outrange the Rocketeers. Uh, and so you can effectively shut down the Rocketeers by having enough of those missile trucks firing constantly, but it is difficult to spiral into those numbers. Medium tanks encountering some grunts here. Depending on how much you are willing to micro, grunts can technically beat the tanks. Wow, I didn't even realize there were different colors here. We have like a uh, sort of a brown color, and then we have this very dark yellow color, and they just look very, very similar to my eyes. It's one of the, one of the mysteries of the universe is... Do, do we all see the same colors? And pretty sure the answer is no. Certainly not with uh, colorblind people. Anyways, minefield was set up over here. These are just light mines, so mainly just to shut down grunts or rovers or any, anything cheap and inefficient here. Incisors certainly up on that uh, qualifier list. Definitely going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Now, while he was busy with that minefield, a couple of incisors from an enemy faction. Looks like these are incisors of AI Easy have ravaged the base over here. They do get a phenomenal hit, and they're going to take down all the build power, a lot of the wind production, the energy converters go pop, and the advanced solar panels are well under attack. This is a uh, this is a dangerous push right here. Yep, that is all of the energy production here for Orvod Bovar, who has to now retreat the commander in order to deal with this, but there's just not enough out in time. A pounder or two would have been great defense against all of this, just because it does that AoE damage, and also it's very, very uh, impulse heavy. It can stun units when it kills them. But now Orvar Borvar is in quite a tricky situation here. All those tanks came from over here. I'm guessing AI Easy was just looking for an efficient way to trade those out, and I guess moving on into the, the T2 stage while using those in order to kill his opponent going to be definitely well worth it. And the incisors still aren't done. Orvar Borvar is still in a lot of trouble. He does not have a lab out right now. He's going to need assistance from his teammates, but he just doesn't have it. These tanks don't really have an option as far as where they can go, but I think this is probably their best bet. Going to kill this metal extractor? Sure. Why not? Get another pick while you're over here and while essentially no defenses are up and online. Crab rotation. Realizing that there's a opening, a uh, an, an advant advantageous opening available here. Going to start moving the units through. Spy cam is found, but it's going to give an early alert here. It's a lot of light laser towers, but that's also a lot of grunts. Yeah, it looks like crop rotation is going to back off on that front. 
maybe reinforce that with some rocket bots to easily pickle that apart. Maybe we'll just send in the Tigers. Tigers will easily take down those T1 defenses. Virtually no contest. Suddenly a big flip-floppity flip in the middle of the map here. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a pretty pretty sizable difference. Lancelion has pushed forward here with the armor support of Nexode, and both of them have managed to capture the center of the map. Actually, Devel37 has done a great job of pushing forward as well, using those Rocketeers to great advantage here. And now suddenly this uh, Northwestern team has a huge advantage over the middle of the map, going to quickly claim up those Metal Extractors. I think that's exactly the right move here. Once you have those metal extractors up and running, that's a 9.3 metal per second advantage going to be going into your pockets, and it's definitely, definitely going to help that team out. At this point, T2 should be propagating around the map here. I'd love to see a transport going, uh, trying to get these T2s over. Yeah, starting up an advanced fusion reactor, not bad. Going to uh, going to slingshot Dolphy's economy here into that late game with the advantage of 3,000 extra energy coming in per second. Pulsor, going to be building these metal extractors, I do believe. That is nice to see. Very important to get those up and running. Every scrap of metal that you can pull into your economy is oh so precious right now. While we are waiting for a little bit of aggression, I might as well remind everybody that September 30th, there is going to be a huge tournament going on. The, uh, the grand finals for the 1v1 Pro League tournament that we've been watching the qualifiers with all week. And uh, I'm super, super excited. I've been, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be up and awake for the whole thing. 1300 GMT. That's 1300 GMT. Go ahead and translate that to your local time zone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that to you. I'll just tell you the, tell you the time that I was told, and that's the, uh, that's when it'll all start. I will not be streaming it. It will be all over on the official Beyond All Reason Twitch channel. Um, you, you can just look them up, and I'm sure it'll come up real quick. It's a, uh, it'll be a, it'll be a fun day of events, and I am super, super stoked to see what goes on there. I'm not sure how many of the games that I'm going to be able to catch and how many of the games they're going to be able to cover, but I will certainly be glad to uh, go clean up and, and look at some of those other games after the fact. So I'm going to, I'm going to be spending the day hanging out with everybody, having a good time. Should be a whole lot of fun. I, uh, I think that's all I have to say for now. So far. <laughs> The center of the map has been captured completely. Devel re recruiting the commander. I think you probably should have finished up this build power here, but that's fine. Uh, build power will come up eventually, but right now he's not even really producing out of the lab, so it's not like it's a tremendous issue. Still, producing a whole bunch of Janus is never a bad idea. It's certainly good enough to snipe down a commander. I think it takes five or six shots in order to kill a commander. Depends a little bit on the engagement angle here. Are we... Oh, these are two different teams. Okay, so Raiko has held on to this little choke point here while some artillery just randomly bombard this area in the middle for uh the shark <laughs> uh i like that name the shark uh yeah that's uh i mean it's great and all not super threatening to raiko who's just more than happy to uh sit back here behind his static defenses and continue teching up eventually going to get up into that t2 stage and uh potentially overwhelm all these forces here from the shark if he doesn't get into t2 as well Teamwork makes the dream work as a uh, T or the advanced fusion reactor rather will finish up for Dolphy. It's going to be tons and tons of energy going into his economy uh, and also into the economy of his teammates here. Let's see Tenebos going into a uh, T2 lab here. Very powerful stuff. Dolphy begging for a T1 aircon. Hoping and praying. <laughs> And there are the Tiger Tanks. Taking an interesting route. I would have thought that they would have gone after Orvar Borvar, but uh, instead they are going to push up the center ramp, ravaging Raiko uh, in the process, and eventually making it all the way over here. Not able to do all too much, though. Eventually just going to be stopped more so by the bodies in the way rather than the uh, volume of firepower, but eventually, nonetheless, going to be stopped. Sort of a neutral third party. <laughs> it was the uh, it was Raiko contributing from... Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was... Oh, no, that was Raiko's teammate. Okay. So much damage was done here then. That's interesting. Uh, either way, it was this team pushing in like this and in trying to get into this team's back pocket, but it ended up canceling out the leverage that Lancelian had as those T2 tanks just ravaged the entire wasteland up there. Oh, interesting. Somehow a tank has landed down there. That's a bit odd. 
Grunt's on the low ground here, getting ready for a uh, stampede. They're going to try and walk their way through, do a little bit of damage. Don't mind that whatsoever. Might as well use that extra ramp space since you got it. Wouldn't mind seeing it over here as well. The shark could just walk some units across on this low ground here. Slink them up into the back line, the mid line, I guess I would call it here, of Ryko, and eventually you're going to find yourself in a nice little position. Anything you request comes up for Tenebos. Not a bad idea. Not at all. Antinuke, of course, very uh, powerful. Very necessary in a game like this. Usually the bane of my existence is the failure to get Antinukes up and running. Dolphy going into two advanced fusion reactors at the same time. Feels a little bit greedy, but I guess he knows what he's doing as he gets two of them up and running. He also has the uh, energy converter starting up here as well. Does have another T2 constructor going to be working on stuff over here. He actually has a lot of T2 constructors working all over the place. Busy, busy man, trying to eco as quickly as possible, make sure that his team has a competitive edge into that T3 late game here. No advanced fusion reactors up yet, although we are seconds away from finishing one here for Lord Vador, who is going to finish up their uh, Cortex advanced fusion reactor a little bit cheaper, so a little bit easier to finish up here, but it does complete, and that is going to mean that Lord Vador can begin to transition into that proper late game economy. Antinu comes up as well, that's good to see. Always important to make sure that you have anti-nuke coverage all over the place. A single nuke can ravage you in a free-for-all, but certainly it uh, is just as powerful in the team game. Wiping out one, two, or even three of your opponents would essentially spell certain doom for your side of the map. These free-for-all games tend to revolve around who can, uh, who, can, who can break the stalemate between them and an ally the quickest, right? <laughs> Whichever team can manage to uh, puncture their allies' defenses quicker, typically ends up being the victor because they're able to reclaim all that metal and transition into a proper T3 economy. I was thinking about that in my off time. I, uh, I play just as much beyond all reason in my head as I do in the, uh, in the game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that I was thinking about is how, uh, how it stacks up against StarCraft. And I realized one of the interesting things, uh, interesting comparison I can, I, I could think of between this game and StarCraft is the fact that uh, in StarCraft, there are mineral patches around the map, and uh, for anybody who might not be familiar, there are mineral, mineral patches around the map, and you, ha in order to, in order to get money, you have to extract from those mineral patches and return to your home base. What that means is that on every map in StarCraft 2, there is a finite, a large but finite uh, amount of resources available to each player. There is there is a a decisive amount of material on each on each. Uh, each sec section of the map, there's no there's no infinite amount of economy scaling. There's no economy from nowhere, in other words. It's pretty interesting when compared to Bar, because, uh, of course, Bar is completely the other way around. There's essentially no mineral to claim from the map. I guess, I mean, there, there is the reclaim, right? That's sort of minerals to reclaim, but uh, there's, it's not, it's, it's, it's different because it's constantly exponentially growing. There's no, uh, there's no slowing down. Eventually, StarCraft games tend to revolve around who can uh, whittle down the opponent so much as to uh, make sure that they, they don't have any resources left to defend themselves whereas Beyond No Reason exponentially grows personally well you can probably tell that I'm a bigger fan of the uh, exponential growth algorithm rather than the uh, <laughs> the the linear death algorithm I guess but to each that round Starcraft a very fun game but I can never go back after having this functionality the ability to right click drag and move units around is just too powerful these ticks are causing quite a uh, quite a ruckus here for the forces of the southwestern team <laughs> i want to say the blue team but then again it's not really the blue team is it oh raider jammer was found accidentally will be the uh will be the little spy tank going down there starlights turn their heads around again and they are going to be ready to fire Oh, Commander misses a D-gun. Starlight's get a couple shots off on him. Trying their best to hit it. They scuffed that Commander up quite badly, but there's a lot of spider tanks going around all over the place. Very common. Oh, killer D-gun right there by the Shark. Absolutely killer. Beautiful D-gun right there. That Commander manages to take down every last one of those delicious spider bots, killing them with a disintegrator rifle shot directly towards their face wonderfully done did you know fun fact of the day spiders don't actually have a head 
They have a uh, it's it, it's a there's a special name for it, and I can't remember that part of the fact. But uh, there's a special word for the appendage that they have at the front of their body. It is essentially a torso with all the affixturements of a head. Um, there you go. The more you know. <laughs> I learned that because I had to research uh, spiders for a drawing class a long, long time ago. And uh, learned, yeah, apparently when you draw a spider, you don't draw a head. You draw two bodies and you connect them together. Anti-stealth field or anti-stealth generator or anti-stealth detector. There's the word. We'll go down here. Taught me how to draw, didn't teach me how to speak. <laughs> Fusion reactor will go down as well. This starlight clinging on to dear life, but it is a three star hero, or three chevron hero. And uh, it certainly has earned that title. The shark in a lot of trouble here. Uh, yep, getting bursted down by those starlights and the commander will fall. The bull's too strong to hand, or too, well, yeah, too strong to handle here. And eh, sharpshooter is going to be a decent option. Yep. Click of their rifle signals death from afar. And I think eventually these bulls will be mopped up by the residual forces coming out of Bull Store. But that is the vast majority of the base from the Shork going down here. Those pulsars have been tremendously effective. Meanwhile, Southwestern team has pushed in and we do see some fiends running across trying to break this front line. There was a rattlesnake being set up here. Don't know if that one's going to finish. Eh, a couple of seconds left on that. It's a close one for sure. Those ticks, so annoying. You really need a pulsar, or a uh, beamer, rather. Beamer, very, very effective at shutting that down. A gauntlet here, firing at these uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Men. <laughs> Sharpshooters just waiting for their, their cue here. Meanwhile, Dolphy in the back going crazy with the economy. Advanced fusion reactor after advanced fusion reactor. You can see at this point, so much metal income that he can't even really effectively spend all of it. More Aphis is coming up and online, more energy converters coming up and online, constantly improving, constantly growing. And I think eventually this story is going to be told by the person who can eco out the most. Hold on, let me take a look at these statistics. Uh, metal excess, metal produced, that's the one. 303,000, 273,000, 121,000, and 207,000. Dolphy's team far and away in the lead as far as total metal produced. I have a feeling that a lot of that goes into the fact that he has so many Aphis in the back line. We're starting some more production back here. We do have Aphises after Aphises coming up for AI Easy, but just nowhere near the exponential scaling yet. We are at 131 metal per second, usually right around 200, 250 is when you start to hit that metal uh, leveraging point where you really can just start to build more and more Aphises without a care in the world. It starts to not even detract. You can essentially uh, produce more and more of them every single second. Uh, Aphis is coming up here as well for Grumpy. He knows he has to get on top of it, but Dolphy has essentially been free to eco this entire game. Hasn't had to worry about defense, hasn't had to worry about offense. Essentially just completely valid to uh, worry about his own base defense here. Or his own e economy defense, anyways. Yep, you can see him now overflowing a lot of metal to his teammates. Uh, more or less. And I'm sure his team is more than happy to soak up whatever residual effects do get leaked into their economies here. T2 Aerial Constructor to build those uh, energy converters. Tons and tons of build power here to throw up those advanced fusion reactors whenever they are, uh, whenever it's possible. Get those up and running. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind seeing a metal storage here, although if you're going to spend all the metal, not tremendously necessary. Still, still useful though sometimes. That's what the economy of a pro looks like. Meanwhile, T3 unit production is underway here, but nowhere near the economy for Dark Knight. He is going into Marauders, and I don't hate it, but it's definitely not going to be enough to break uh, whatever can be thrown over here. There are EMP bombers that are going to try and shut down a lot of these. Oh, one of the Marauders is actually getting pretty close. Uh-oh. Oh, there were some cloaked pit bulls over here. Those are going to be very useful. Out of range of one of the pit bulls, but it, there, there is still another one firing away here, and you can see whittling down 15 or so percent off of this guy, and that is going to be the Marauder threat mostly dealt with. EMP bombers are so good. <laughs> very, very powerful. Very good at their job. Able to, for the most part, easily shut down the entire aggression over here, making a lot of those, uh, a lot of those Marauders effectively inactive. It's a, it's such an efficient way to deal with units, but it's just, I mean, it's, it's hard to beat efficiency of that scale. 
I was a little bit worried there, but I think that's going to stabilize eventually. Razorbacks are now coming out. Uh, we do see T3 production underway. Dolphy making that transition very, very quickly here and is going to start pumping out Razorbacks. I think Razorbacks are the perfect option for this map. They're quick enough that they can be rerouted around wherever you need them, but they're also sturdy enough and uh, do enough damage per second that I think you're probably going to be in a pretty good spot against basically anything that gets sent your way. Would love to see the sharpshooters uh, parked over on this ridge over here. Just have them stay over on that ridge and have them fire down at whatever can come in that direction. Razorbacks, for the mean, in the meantime, though, are going to do more than enough to uh, quell the forces leaking in from this direction. Yeah, I'm not sure if sending in one Marauder at a time is going to really do enough damage here. Don't believe so. And uh, now the EMP bombers from Dolphy are going to start bombing away in the center of the map, trying to shut down whatever they can over here. Nicely done. These two teams have just been at each other's neck this entire time and not really focusing enough on economy. You can see that the orange player, uh, who is that there? Virtual P, working on an advanced fusion reactor in the background here, but also still producing units, still producing as much as he can. It's just too much for one player to do on their own. And I think the strategy to allow your best player to eco like a madman in the back line, protect them at all costs, and eventually let them uh, be the mass contributor here, I think it's going to be a real, real... Uh, benefit to the blue team or two well Dolphy's team <laughs> marauders are going to be resurrected here interesting okay i don't hate that it's just a uh it's just easier to reclaim them but i guess Dolphy figures at this point he has enough metal he has enough energy there's not really any point in reclaiming you might as well just produce 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 and eventually these razorbacks are going to be able to overwhelm this base frankly i think they could already overwhelm that base but uh yeah right now probably not going to well, yeah, he does get aggressive. I was going to say, probably not going to push, but I guess he smells blood in the water here, wants a little bit of retaliatory justice, and so it will, in fact, move in the Razorbacks for a little bit of a counter push. Three Razorbacks versus one. I'm going to take the three every day. Termites get blasted down relatively quickly here. Another Razorback pumped out of the lab here by uh, Dark Knight, but that will be bursted down quite quickly as well. Now these Razorbacks are essentially free to march on in. There is a commander here for Dark Knight that is available in order to degun down some of these, and I think it's going to have to get a Miracle Deer Gun. A miracle Deer Gun? <laughs> it's a four-point Deer Gun. Oh, damn. Well, I mean, it's about as close to a Deer Gun as you can get. That was three Razorbacks going down for the for the price of one degun. Very, very nicely done. Unfortunate that Dolphy queued those in in such a way. That was a, a little bit of a waste, but still. Nice defense by Dark Knight there. Very, very nicely done. And uh, at the very least, is going to stabilize him for a little while. Resbot's still working hard, though. So the saving grace is that this northern side hasn't really been pushed in. Dolphy would be forced to split his forces and uh, move him in this direction. I think now, with T3 out and running, it wouldn't be too big of an issue. But certainly earlier on, when he was uh, just equaling up like crazy, it would have been very, very catastrophic if forces had just breached this wall over here and had walked all the way into the economic centers over here i think it definitely could have done a lot of damage fortunately for dolphy the northwestern team was more hyper focused on dealing with all these units over here there are spy bots walking through a minefield that's funny oh they don't detect each other oh interesting hmm that's an interaction that i feel like shouldn't work that way i feel like the spy bot should definitely yeah i feel like oh is it a friendly spy bot am i okay i'm being dumb Ladies and gentlemen, you saw it here first. The Brightworks does not know his colors. <laughs> I was going to say, like, the, the, they should definitely detect each other, right? Like, the it's a it's a landmine. You should, whether you're cloaked or not, it shouldn't change the fact that you stepped on it. Anyways. Commander's still in position here, trying to uh, clean all this up, and he is doing a damn good job of it. Eventually going to be bursted down, but taking down a damn good amount of forces, a large, a damn large amount of forces in order to uh in order to kind of pivot this persecutors also up and running going to be shelling away at whatever they can here i like that quite a bit i love the persecuted platform as well i like that it's kind of this dark hole that the turret just rises out of i think it's very cool yeah a little bit of passive damage i don't hate it i'm no hater um so in that case let's take a look at the vision radius just here so you can see this is the vision radius of the northwestern team oh Yep, Northwestern team. I was wondering wondering if there's enemies snuck in over there. They have not. Uh, that's the Northwestern team's vision radius. Let's switch over to the Dolphy cam. See what he can see. Uh, and you can see that it's a, uh, a mess. <laughs> a mess all over. 
so scary not to have any sort of vision whatsoever over on this side of the map. I'd be very, very worried about that if I were in Dolphy's shoes, but I guess more focused on the aggression over here on the southern side of the map. And uh, it is a lot. There's there's now Karganeth in place here to shoot down any of those Razorbacks that come marching in. Uh, Karganeth are very powerful, but nowhere near the power scale of the Razorback. Razorback is just quite a bit more expensive and does a little bit more DPS. Karganeth are just very, very... Uh, they're kind of a, a general solution, right? They're a bandied that can go over many wounds. They're capable on many fronts, but just not the perfect response to anything. A lot of T1 and T2 coming out here, though. I guess a lot of it is just resurrected. Yeah, these red spots have had a field day resurrecting whatever they can over here. GG, Dolphy gonna win. Says Grumpy. <laughs> Looks like a nuke was fired here. Anti-nuke will shoot that down very quickly. Uh, it's actually a lot of nukes have been charged up here. We've got uh, three in the chamber and another well on the way. We are uh, gearing up towards seven nukes in total. A little bit of a pause here. Pardon me. There we go. All right. Uh, Ovar, you do not have the eco for this. Please stop. It won't fire when it's done, and they will have shields. Trying to uh, coach Ovar, Orvar a little bit here. And he has a fusion reactor. I feel like he has the economy for that. Definitely, though, if you're going to be in the back line here, if you're going to be in this spot uh, that we see Orvar in, you're going to want to do something a little more like this. You're definitely going to want to build a solid line of construction turrets and plenty and plenty and plenty of advanced fusion reactors, more than you could ever hope to use, uh, because eventually it's really going to come down to who has the most advanced fusion reactors and how much metal can they produce. Uh, at this point, it is Dolphy leaking energy to his entire team. You can see most of them able to spend it, but even so, uh, not always. <laughs> Still some of them leaking leaking metal here. Vanguards are now crawling out of the lab. I like that quite a bit. Vanguard's very powerful, of course. Capable of firing away at long distance. As is shown right here, these Vanguards firing away at the Persecutors. They're essentially a Persecutor on legs. What is the range on one of these bad boys? 1325 versus 1390. So they can fire away at any of these Persecutors over here. I'm guessing these Persecutors just don't have the, uh, the vision right now. There is the radar over here. Yeah, but all of them do go down. Yeah, those vanguards, man, they are tough. Very, very difficult to deal with. Trying right now to kill this last persecutor. I think eventually they're going to do it. There they go. Shutting down that static defense over there is quite nice. Razorbacks have been used to breach the defenses over here. All those resbots get sniped by a nuke. That's, uh, I mean... As far as nuclear launches go, it's probably not the biggest target you're hoping to hit, but it's uh, certainly a target, nonetheless. Shuts down any any hope of reclaim on this front line for a little while, anyways. Build power goes down here, and it is going to mean that this advanced fusion reactor does not finish, I do believe. These Razorbacks are just marching in too quickly. Catapult's starting to fire here, but it might just be a little too, a little too late. Razorbacks pretty scuffed up, but there's just nothing to deal with them. Yep, no heavy hitters of, uh, of their own here. Four... Crop rotation. Uh, yeah, Karganeth, I guess, are going to do a decent job, but still not entirely cost-effective here. Razorback already in the back line, and you can see it whittling away at these defenses. Finally, it falls, but man, that was a uh, that was an expensive tear right through the economy here of crop rotation. Eventually, the advanced fusion reactor does come up. All right, not bad. Aphis just barely gets up in time. If you launch that attack nuke, it's war vital. Where is uh, vital? Oh, maybe meant virtual. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nukes up in the air, and they are all headed towards the Dolphster's base. Luckily for him, did build multiple anti nukes here. Predicted that such an event might happen. The uh, the nuclear barrage. <laughs> And does have enough anti-nukes to fend off that assault here. Definitely quite draining on the anti-nuke chambers, though. And I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to go for two or three more. Yep, there he goes. Gonna put down quite a few more of those. No reason not to, because, uh, yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're really not gonna want to lose all this to a couple of nukes that slip through the defenses and pop your entire base. Everybody's had it happen. Nobody enjoys it happening. It's a, uh, it's a tough one for sure. Titan is now out on the battlefield. Uh, for Dolphy over here. As you can see, 
Titan blasting away at these Razorbacks, making it relatively short work of them. They are, I mean, they're doing a decent job of fighting back, but still 63% on that Titan versus three dead Razorbacks. Basically no competition here. Vanguard's also contributing significant firepower. Going to be waddling their way up this wall and into the high ground here of Dark Knight. Uh, his base is going to come under siege relatively quickly here. Yeah, this is uh, starting to look quite sketch. Titan is pulling back so it can regroup with its brother here. Vanguard are up on the hill and they are now going to start firing away. See, that's the difference between Armada and Cortex. Cortex would have just taken the shot as soon as he saw it, even if he was standing right on top of it. Oh, well, like that. Giving, giving me an example right there. Thank you, guys. Uh, Armada will wait a, a patient second or so in order to uh, take the shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Karganeth here are uh, going to be engaged by the vanguards, but I really don't think that's exactly what these are going to be useful for. I think these should just keep marching. I think uh, we're probably going to find better use out of these if we just keep marching them forward. Right now, I don't think this is exactly the best place for him, but still, free damage is free damage, and uh, kind of hard to turn down at that at this point. Titans are now grouped up. That's three bad brothers that you know so well. Uh, starting way back in history, they're going to start marching all the way in to uh, McD, <laughs> a.k.a. McDark, McDark Knight's uh, base here. Trying to put together the Beastie Boys and Beyond All Reason. There's a, there's a hybrid you didn't see. Mark it on your bingo cards, folks. Didn't see that one coming. Nobody had uh, Beastie Boys X Beyond All Reason in their uh, in their 2024 bingo card. <laughs> uh, let's take a moment to look around the map here and see what's going on. Looks like Tenebos is getting himself into that proper T3 economy here. You can see starting to scale like a madman making sure to get as many of those advanced fusion reactors up as possible we see a massive army over here if this army pulls the trigger that could actually be Dolphy in quite a lot of trouble yeah that army could probably move a bit faster than Dolphy could react i mean paralytic planes are pretty good emp bombers that is uh might stun quite a lot of it but i think eventually yeah, i think Dolphy's just going to be in a better position here anti-nukes were built to uh contend with those seven nuclear launchers the seven deadly nuclear launchers and uh yeah they'll make relatively short work of all those nukes kind of a bummer you uh you you really have to wait until you can pull the trigger on the nuclear launchers you want it to be a, a massive surprise and you have to make sure that you have more than enough to overwhelm here as a cortex player that's very difficult because those nukes charge so slowly and they're so difficult to build it's a uh, it's a really tough balance to strike Commander in position for a killer D-gun right here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Massive D-guns right there by Dark Knight. He does manage to take down five Titans with his commander. Massive, massive D-guns right there. Tons of metal going down. That's got to be, what, 60,000 metal? 80,000 metal, something like that. And Titans going down. Huge, huge connection right there. The Titans are going to be forced to back off. No idea why Dolphy is including a whole bunch of T1. Looks like eventually he's going to start spamming out ticks, but I think it's a little too late. He really needs those ticks yesterday floating through this gap here. That was a massive, massive hit right there. That shuts down all of Dolphy's aggression with an excellently placed commander. You can see that commander is now a gold star general. Well earned for his combat antics. <laughs> This battle is hyper stagnating over here. Tech warfare versus tech warfare. Not exactly the uh, not exactly the most riveting of gameplay. <laughs> Catapults are a little cooler to see, firing away from a long range. I love the design on these guys with the little rotating rocket pack on their back or battery pack, whatever it is. Kind of reminds me of a rotisserie chicken, which uh, I mean, it sort of fits the theme, right? I feel like a lot of uh, Cortex units kind of look like chickens. The Shiva looks like a big long chicken the catapult is a wide chicken the juggernaut is a tall chicken <laughs> the behemoth is a fat chicken it all makes sense there's a grand design eventually titan numbers are going to be replenished but i mean this is four titans when it could have been nine that's a uh, kind of a depressing thing to think about here not going to be much work at all for these titans to take down these razorbacks here you see they're smoking corpses left in the dust here but yeah we're uh we're not gonna accomplish much without sending some sort of a scout forward first more and more anti-nukes coming up as well Dolphy very very careful that he's not going to be uh nuked to death it's a sad ending and he's certainly not not one to uh fall to that 
Metal storages are queued here. They're not starting, oddly enough. Not sure exactly why. Is something in the way? Oh, there we go. Not sure exactly what was happening there, but eventually metal storages will come up and online here for Dolphy at over a thousand metal a second. I'm sure he's eager to have those metal storages up and running so that, uh, yeah, he can finally build up enough metal to maybe go for a Ragnarok or some sort of end game play here. A little bit of politics in the chat. Virtual P calling for a truce. And, uh, you know, everybody, everybody and their mother trying to figure out how in the hell they're going to deal with Dolphy, the superior threat over here. <laughs> Calling for a D-gun out of pulse or I think that's the right idea. He did it earlier with those spider bots, and I think he's got a great option for it now. Eh, you know what? Doesn't even really need to. Not bad whatsoever. And uh, yeah, that entire push will be held off. The Pulsar with the Pulsar. <laughs> Working together in tandem here. Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. It's at times like this where you have to ask yourself, what is my tick spam really accomplishing? Is this actually doing anything, or am I just putting metal into a project that's not really benefiting me in any way there's no aggression over here we're not we're not leveraging this into anything it's just it's just ticks running into a stream of units and i, I mean at the very least it's cortex units so maybe they'll friendly fire each other but uh yeah not by by most imaginations not really the most uh useful expense of metal Big bombing run by Dolphy will take out a whole bunch of energy converters. That also, of course, scuffs up any of the energy converters that were, or the uh, fusion reactors, rather, that were sitting nearby. Blizzards will come in for a bombing run. Oh, they don't get it, though. Close, but they do not pop that, uh, that big ball of fusion reactors. And so, at least for the time being, there is, uh, there is still a chance here for these players down south. AI Easy and Lord Vader both trying to get their economies back into shape. We need to see energy converters coming up here. That's really the only thing that's going to keep this uh, keep this afloat. Nuclear launchers, they were nice. Didn't serve much of a purpose, though. I think he's got to start thinking about nuking other areas of the map. It's just, I, I think the decision making is that uh, Vader knows that this is the biggest threat currently out on the map. However, uh, it is also the most well protected because of that. So... Difficult to attack that, so the question is, is it worth it to go for uh, go for the kill on another enemy if that might just give an advantage to these players, or is it better to just hold on and uh, use those resources differently? Big bombing run sneaks through here, though. Ooh. That is definitely enough to kill an advanced fusion reactor. Uh, might eat my words. There we go. Barely enough to kill an advanced fusion reactor, but it will eventually pop that massive cluster of fusion reactors. They change target the bombers that is do change target and are going to head on over in this direction trying to get a, uh, a spicy payload off on top of this fusion reactor as well 10 percent left on that bad boy i think the follow-up attack will be enough to take out that fusion reactor and that's going to be another huge hit to the economies of the southwestern team chain reacts all of the energy converters over here as well and that is a massive massive victory for this team over here uh, we didn't push in with any of the good units over on this side. We used all our tanks, sent them up into this area where the, the tanks have no value. Tanks cannot do anything in this area here. They can only attack from the southern side. So these tanks really only were destined for one one way through here. Ooh, wow, epic snipe here with a bunch of those rocket trucks. Did not see that coming. Those rocket trucks managed to kill a whole bunch of advanced fusion reactors over here in the back of the base for Tenebos. What a snipe right there. That really does hurt pretty bad here for the blue team. Uh, the Dolphy team. <laughs> right now, that actually brings Tenebos and Dolphy within reasonable uh, ec economies of each other. Tenebos now with 1.7, 1.6, whereas Dolphy is lingering around 1.5, dependent on reclaim. Lull Cannon will start to fire, and it will destroy the fusion reactors over on this side of the map. There's still a few lingering on over here. I don't know if Delphi has vision of that. Let me just take a look at the Delphi cam. Certainly does. 
Not sure why we're not firing into the, this back line right here, trying to pop all of these advanced fusion reactors. Seems like it'd be a pretty worthwhile target. There's also a whole lot over here. You have to assume that at the very least, that's got to be something juicy. Firing into all these radar signatures over on that side. Another massive explosion over here. There we go. Finally firing into the back lines. This is game ending damage, at least for a couple of these teams. Losing the vast majority of their economies. There goes the chain reaction on the build power. The advanced fusion reactors are nowhere to be seen after that nuclear cloud. And that is going to be all she wrote for the southeastern team, I do believe. Southwestern team, they're still clinging on in there, but all those fusion reactors going down is essentially going to be the end of them. And it kind of comes down to this engagement on the northern front. Titan versus Titan, brother versus brother. Ooh, excellent EMP right there, though. Does shut down a lot of those Titans. Meaning that Tenebos' Titans are going to get a... Or, sorry, Grumpy's Titans are going to get a much, much better... I've been calling him Tenebos this entire time. <laughs> uh, Grumpy's Titans are going to get a much better engagement here as they start to blast through all of these Titans for Dolphy. Excellent play right there. Very, very nicely done. Great use of that EMP missile that Armada has. Remembering that Titans can be EMP'd, shutting them down, and that is going to be Dolphy's Titans wiped away with hardly a scratch done to Grumpy. What a beautiful, beautiful play. EMP bombers here to counter EMP some of these. But frankly, I don't think it's going to be enough. Eh, I mean, I guess. The Juggernaut is here to play. It's Dolphy's Juggernaut. And uh, he is double dipping now, building Cortex and Armada forces. Fighters will be pulled in order to deal with this. I'd love to see some flak trucks up and around here to shoot down all these fighters. Make a little bit more efficient of a trade here. Right now, this Juggernaut just going to town. I think Behemoths would probably be a better option, though. Because there's so many Titans and there's so many choke points here, I think Behemoths would probably work quite a bit better. Just so that you could shut down all that a little bit easier. Counter-aggression down here as there are some Juggernauts pushing through here. Dolphy's Titans getting ready to march. Those are the last residual forces of Dark Knight that are pushing in, or AI Easy, rather. I mean, it's sort of a joint effort, right? Razorbacks of Dark Knight and uh, AI Easy's Juggernauts and the Juggernauts of Dolphy up north here. This is a, uh, this is a crazy battle. Oh, well, <laughs> it is the final battle because the final economy is all gone. Big explosions down south as those Juggernauts do go down. There are a couple of Razorbacks still marching through, though. There's a Pulsar to try and defend, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Juggernauts desperately trying to stop this Titan from marching through. Will he have enough health to make it? I don't know. Oh, he starts the chain reaction on a lot of those build power over there. A lot of those uh, construction turrets, that is. He will chain react all those, but it won't chain react the energy converters, and that is really the savior here. If those energy converters had gone up, it would have been a huge hit to the economy here for Dolphy. But fortunately, it looks like that is not going to be the case. Very, very lucky boy indeed. Lucky, but also he is producing several juggernauts, you know, a, a, a juggernaut per minute or something like that. It's a, <laughs> it's a staggering amount of economy that we're dealing with here. Resbot's going to pick up all the stuff over here, most importantly of which are going to be the commander, which can shut down those T3 units no matter how many of them push through by degunning them apart into nothingness. Titans holding the line. At this point, Karganeth are built, and they are starting to move. Tons and tons of tac nukes. <laughs> how many tactical nuke launchers is that? Eight? Eight in grand total? Pretty funny. They can fire away pretty far, too. Definitely a threat. Uh, at this point, though, it is kind of the residual forces of every army holding on here. Titans trying to break the front lines, and for what it's worth, they are doing a decent job. Picking apart anything that they get too close to. There was a Ragnarok coming up here for Tenebos. I have a feeling that was probably started when he still had his economy. Right now, though, the Titan is in place to shut a lot of this down. With the build power going down, I don't think that Ragnarok is going to come up and uh, be all too useful here. Pond also running through. Sure, why not? <laughs> Tenebos cheekily moving the commander around. Will eventually get the D-gun. Uh, shutting down that Titan, but it does manage to kill the Ragnarok in progress here before all too long. Can this Ragnarok fire away into the base right over here? 
Looks like it doesn't quite have the range for it. It's trying its very best, but it just doesn't quite have the range. And at this point, not much remains for any of these teams here. Dolphy's Karganeth moving across the map. Dark Knight's commander is in position here to degun down a whole lot of them. That is a hero commander right there. 15 kills under its name and tons of those have been titans. Massively effective kill right there. Advanced fusion reactors popping all over the place. Kurganath pretty good against commanders. They are happy to burst this guy down. No uh, pinpointers, it would appear. So not going to be uh, not going to be firing into any radar signatures. It would it would seem. Uh, Dark Knight's running out of power though. He does have the advanced fusion reactor up and running though, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Going to resurrect this other commander too. That's quite nice. Yeah, I think too much damage has just been done here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the game because I do believe we're just watching the death of four, the death of three teams in slow motion here, as uh, Dolphy continues to get his killer move up and ready. Going to be building a whole lot of scouts. I'm guessing that the idea is to scout for a whole bunch of players and then start to march the units. We've got resbots all over the place too. They're probably going to be picking up a whole lot of these T3 units and sending them back in. This is looking dire here for both of these teams. All three of these teams. Karganeth marching forward. Titans marching in. Those Titans took quite a journey here. I think they went all the way up into the middle of the map and then down this ramp and then all the way around to this side. Quite a uh, quite a travel distance. <laughs> And that will be the uh, southwestern team resort or reduced down to just their uh, their remaining two commanders. Crop rotation and AI easy. Sorry, the south southeastern team reduced to their last two commanders. Uh, looks like in fact that team has completely resigned. They just didn't all resign technically, and so there's still a couple players in the game. Can't uh, can't just walk away from your computer. You do actually have to hit the resign button up here in the top right hand corner. <laughs> Yep, Ragnarok going to break through these shields relatively easily. And that is going to be all she wrote for the last remaining outpost of defense for Grumpy. These Pulsars were in a great position to shut down a whole lot of the oncoming forces here. But eventually, the Ragnarok will pierce the shields. Pierce the heavens. Believe in the you. Or believe in the me that believes in you. Uh, and all that good stuff. Grumpy's commander, however, is still in a decent enough position to go dig on these commanders. Or these uh, juggernauts, rather. Just no energy production. Basically all wind production. <laughs> Commander will go down. That is going to be all she wrote for the Northwestern team. South, uh, southeastern team. Going to be headed for a little bit of a defeat here. No D-gun energy on either of these commanders. And so it will be them going down as well. And the final remaining bastion of hope will be the uh, hope against the Dolphy Menace. <laughs> will be the Southwestern team here. Uh, headed up here by Flash, Virtual P, Dotsor, and Orvar Borvar. Reminds me of um, Borat. That's what that name reminds me of. Couple of options to finish this game out. We can, of course, just, uh, you know, control A, left click, right click send every unit and send them as quick as we can uh, we can also go into bombers a bunch of t1 bombers would probably do the job here t2 bombers probably also do the job here whatever the whatever the move is i think the time is nigh bunch of ticks are going to run on through flash's commander is hidden right here by this jammer so there's no radar signature whatsoever uh and you can see that all the flash sees is the oncoming ever Ever unstoppable firepower of the Ragnarok. Yeah, we are getting we are getting right into the end of this match here. Virtual Beast Commander was resurrected. I uh, don't think it's going to stand for long, though. <laughs> Starts D getting into the crowd of ticks. No. So many ticks, so many dead. 121 kills on this commander. <laughs> yep, not bad. There go the ticks. 
They're not even interested in the commander. That is the win condition for this game, is to kill the last enemy commander. Uh, and right now for the orange team, that is one of three. Flash being in the position for the uh, other one. Or being the commander that is one of the other ones. And I don't see another. One, two. I do not see the third commander here for uh, <laughs> for the for the blue team. Oh, there it is. It's Dotsor's commander right here in the back of his base. Hiding out, hoping beyond all hope that there is some savior here. There is not but the Juggernaut fleet marching inwards here. Eventually, that's going to be the last team going down. Dolphy and his teammates claiming victory here after a hard-fought battle on Knockout version 1.5. Thanks a ton for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed today. Don't forget to like down below if you did enjoy. You can also dislike as well. However you're feeling today, I do hope you enjoyed though. I figure if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed the video. Take the second or two that it takes to hit that like button. Really helps these get out there on the algorithm. Makes a huge difference for me. Look at that graph. Oh my goodness. Dolphy showing far and away what is possible when you're left to eco essentially the entire game. I will see you in the very next video. Don't forget to have a great rest of your day. Peace out, folks.